discussing the path that we can take to, to kind of take blockchain to the next level, to mass adoption. Uh, but I guess it makes sense to actually start with thinking where we are at at the moment, how mature uh, the, the technology and the industry at the moment. So I'll just first throw some numbers at you that in 2017, the global blockchain market reached uh, a $411 uh, million valuation according to research and markets. And by 2022, it's expected to grow to 7,600 million at a compound annual growth rate of nothing less but 79 percent. That's pretty huge numbers. But the question is like how credible the current drivers of the market are and whether blockchain technology has truly gained the status of uh, uh, a grown-up industry. And uh, just like one uh, clarification, what we mean by blockchain market? Here we mean, of course, uh, uh, public blockchains and uh, permission blockchains and some hybrids as well. But the funny thing again is like the only real implementation of uh, public blockchain so far working for many years is Bitcoin. And there is uh, nothing workable <laughs> already like solving some problems uh, and disrupting anything in uh, permission blockchain space. So the question is, uh, does it really look like an industry at the moment? Uh, and uh, let's start with debating how mature the blockchain technology is. So uh, this number does not include the market cap of tokens, I'm guessing, no. right? Because then we would Only be talking about billions. Yes. OK, OK, yeah. then that makes sense. <laughs> um, well, there's a joke, and I want to un underline, it did happen in reality, but it's still a joke from the blockchain investment group. Bitcoin worked, and then CryptoKitties worked. <laughs> <laughs> so there, it's not like there is no um, application which really never happened. I think CryptoKitties proved it that, yes, we have issues of scalability. It almost took the Ethereum network down. But it successfully happened with all the financial transaction. Um, said that, um, if a market, they are already thinking that it's going to be a 76 or 72 percent growth yes. uh, in three, four years. I'm pretty sure blockchain is going to beat that. The market is going to beat that. My expectation is it's going to be billion dollar by 2020 or 22. And the reason I'm saying that is most of the applications which have been in the test net in the last two years um, are going to start hitting over the next three to four months. We always say that at consensus, we live in a bubble. So we, we basically are already looking what's going to happen six months and eight months down the lane. And in our head, we have just assumed, of course, that's the reality, and everyone knows about it. So uh, at least four to five our own applications and products going to hit, uh, identity solutions, some of the big wallets, mobile wallets, and a um, lot of art collectibles are going to get on the mainnet, which is going to take valuations higher. Mm -hmm. Said that, the staking pool on Ethereum uh, even if we start with hybrid, with the timeline of Q4 to Q1 next year, is also going to change the numbers and gonna, also going to help with sh uh, sharding and also the scalability side to make more applications to come. So I think we have to change the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in terms of m maturity, uh, you are uh, involved in pushing technology uh, on the governmental level, right? So everything from development and research to actually launching some solutions. Right. So what have been your experience like for all these years? Uh, is, is it mature? <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't think uh, blockchain is already mature. Uh, but it's more than only the discussion, is the technology mature? When I look at the implementations, uh, we've implemented the first small uh, blockchain projects at the Dutch government. Uh, the, the technical part is not the most difficult part. It's much more difficult to get the right people on board and uh, get them working together and to connect the blockchain application to the real uh, world and with the real databases. So it's, uh, when we look at the implementations, it's not mature. But I think it's developing much faster than with the rise of the internet. So. It's just yeah, a matter of time. Uh, and within the Netherlands, I see uh, the, amb the ambition is growing. Uh, there are more organizations, and the government really want to Im implement bigger projects. And at this moment, we use the small implementations and the, the small experiments to think about the more complex projects, which are harder to implement at this moment. But I think we need both. We need practical solutions right now to learn and understand better 
what are the real innovations and what, what are the real disruptions. And it's almost a combination of technology. So when we talk about is blockchain mature, it's not the right questions. It's a combination of different technologies. Are we ready to combine those technologies to find real new business models and real innovations? And I don't think we're there yet. It's complex. Mm. Yeah, you also mentioned uh, people. Yeah, like that was quite yes. difficult. So it means in terms of talents, yes. right? And maybe in terms of investors <laughs> being yeah. fascinated by blockchain technology and having the guts to invest in some blockchain project. So what do you think, like, uh, are the minds uh, ripe <laughs> for uh, mass adoption? Uh, with respect to people who are coming yeah, to the Yeah, if you speak about like, everyone, investors and talents, developers. Yeah, developers. I think you just have to go very early and get them from first year in their undergrad nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there, there is like three different phases which we have seen, and I would love to know how you are seeing it here in Amsterdam. Uh, in US, what we have seen is, People who are in their second year of undergrad or third year are suddenly going very deep into blockchain space. So when you talk to all these undergrad kids, they are more deep than anyone who's like early engineers. And then you have people who have been in job for two, three years. They're reading about it. They have not really moved because they don't think that the job opportunities are equivalently paying uh, at what they are getting in the top companies. And then suddenly you have people who have already like turned around companies or like at the peak of their career and they're like oh this is the next new internet revolution happening so if you want to make money this is the place to jump so we are seeing these three different type of experience uh, moving into the space so what i have done for the time being is like go all the technical very deep technical diligence from the investment side to the undergrad community and then more into working with the portfolio company on the third category and take the middle layer and convert them to invest in them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I also divide people. <laughs> they are the biggest problem at this moment. No, joking. Uh, but I also divide people in two groups. On the, uh, on the one side, I have the, yeah, it's a little bit of blockchain hype. So people are expecting too much from blockchain at this moment. They think that it will solve everything. And on the other side, I have the traditional IT people who are commenting on the uh, yeah, current implementations, which are small, and then they, they all, always say, uh, I don't see what you can't do with traditional technology. It's like a database, et cetera. So I have a lot of discussions with the people the, uh, from the hype and the people, uh, yeah, the traditional IT people. And yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we need more time, and we must also allow ourselves to fail. We don't have to succeed immediately. We can do small projects and fail. Why not? And for the people who believe in the hype and for the traditional IT people, that's, it seems to be hard for them to have this, yeah, this period of time where we just try and figure out and fail a lot. But we need this, I think. Yeah. yeah, and who do you think will drive the mass adoption? Is it going to be the grassroots level, speaking about ICOs, yeah, so like people that created so many um, uh, projects on blockchain, whether they're viable or not, but there is a kind of a, a whole menu of uh, what you can put on the blockchain. Plus then there are uh, tech giants, yeah, that create different accelerating pro pro programs for startups and explore the uh, area there. Then there are different consortiums that also uh, experiment uh, in groups <laughs> on the blockchain technology. So where do you think uh, the mass adoption is going to come from? Or is it like kind of collaborative uh, impulse? I think the day we have a seamless integration of blockchain, into existing way of using things without people even realizing if I'm going on an app, I'm getting all the benefits of blockchain, which is controlling my own data, accountability, transparency, and making monetizing my own data without feeling that I have to create a new wallet for every app, without thinking I have to buy a new coin, without the seamless integration into the existing system and the existing infrastructure with getting all the benefits is what's gonna drive the mass. Uh, adoption, the day, as uh, even before I was talking about, the day a 60-year-old 60 60 year guy who's using Facebook can continue to use a very similar application and get everything, but with more protection, 
will move towards that new side because there is more protection. But now if he has to learn a whole dynamics and the geography around it, then that's not going to happen easily. So th even when we are looking for the companies, like for an example, one of our portfolio company, Vault, which we just recently announced, um, uh, the reason we were very excited about Vault is uh, ex-Facebook Messenger team coming together to create mobile wallet, which is also going to be your one place identity solution. So you can go on mobile, you can use the same UX UI, and you can lock everything at one place with the benefit of blockchain. So people don't have to go and create thousand things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about the governmental side? <laughs> um, well, I um, there are two things I want to mention. Uh, I travel a lot and we try to work together a lot with other governmental organizations and also with corporates and startups. But I, when I travel, I see more or less the same use cases in each country. Uh, and if it's the right use case to start with, it depends on the country. For example, in the Netherlands, we have a very good working land registration office. We trust them, it works quite well and fast. And when you go to, for example, India, it's not functioning at all. There's a lot of fraud. It goes uh, slow. And then it's a right use case to start with land registration because you can immediately improve something. In the Netherlands, it doesn't make sense to, to start with something which is working well with immature technology. So you must choose the right uh, use case, and it depends on the, on the country. But we must also start uh, for real mass adoption. We must start working together. It doesn't make sense if uh, we all, all have our, our own application for educational documents or for identity, and you can only use it in your own country. So that's why we really yeah, uh, invest in relations with other countries to st start sharing prototypes, figure out what is the right solution on that digital identity. How can we, how can we use it? And how can we build cross-border projects? So we, we, we try to figure out which country is working on which topic, and how can we yeah, start the first uh, cross-border projects. And I think the most easy topics are, for example, the educational certificates, or uh, we have a project on vaccinations. And let's start as so soon as possible with those kinds of topics. So after that, we can start collaborating on digital identity and healthcare processes, which are more, di more complex. Mm -hmm. But for ma mass adoption, we must cross borders, um, mm -hmm. because otherwise it doesn't make any sense at all. Mm -hmm. But what do you think can actually accelerate uh, the mass adoption? So you mentioned like that the benefits, yeah, kind of the obvious benefits, probably the context yeah, of digital economy, that everything is going to be digitalized and it should be put on kind of a trusted platform. So what's going to actually uh, influence the, the impact, the speed of the adoption? I think uh, <clears throat> going back, like people will start realizing over time, like data has already become <clears throat> a very big issue. Most of the people, if, if, even if they didn't know what was happening with their data, with all the headlines and newspaper today, they know that there's something which is broken in the system, mm. may not know the depth of it. So once you're going to start getting a pop-up window saying, hey, uh, if you basically share your name and your geographical location, you're going to get two cent or like two tokens back, people will start realizing the power of monetization of their data and the control of that data. So those incentives, the more and more people are going to start realizing, are going to just start moving to a system which is going to give them more comfort, not only for monetization, but also the security. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how we accelerate the process? What was your experience with pushing through those uh, 30 prototypes of blockchain? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think there's not one solution. We need a, a combination of uh, yeah, inter uh, interventions. Um, for example, we need more people working on this. Uh, at the beginning, when I started two years ago, it was really hard to find people who can build anything on a blockchain uh, platform. At this moment, there are more startups and there are more developers, but still, we don't have enough. So uh, we need more people. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, but but to you get also mentioned like that you had those questions from legislators asking how secure it is <laughs> and yes. whether it is legal. <laughs> yes, that's the second part. When uh, when you have the people and they start building a uh, blockchain application, then you're not, and it, it does function, but you're not there yet. When I launched the first prototypes, the first question you get from the management. Is, uh, is it secure and is it legal to use it? And 
are we allowed to use it in this way? And uh, those questions are yeah, very important to answer because otherwise you, you will build great stuff, but you, uh, nobody dares to uh, use it. Yeah. So that's why we, we developed a, a legal certificate and we have uh, yeah, uh, people who can review the, 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 the codes. Uh, so we must work hard on that. So there's an, a lot of wor work on the security and uh, legal part. Uh, we must also start with um, other projects. Uh, in our my projects, uh, we started with an existing process, and then we uh, use blockchain technology to improve the existing process. But I think it's time for the next step. We must do new things, and we must uh, come up with other projects as well. And of course, it's nice you can uh, fasten your, uh, your process and make it better, and uh, that's fine. I believe that part. But now we must really think about uh, how can we improve society. For example, blockchain, we know we can build decentralized marketplaces. I've seen enough prototypes. But how do we get to the next step and have real implemented decentralized marketplaces? And we need great startups for that. We need cr people, great minds to, to build those kinds of things. And technology is only part of it. We must also, uh, yeah, we need to find people who are actually implementing it. And that's, that's hard to do, but we need them. So we can make the sharing economy more mature. So we can solve, uh, the, in the Netherlands, I still don't have my own uh, healthcare data. So I, there are a lot of things we can solve, but we must go to the next uh, level. And then we need the technical people, but it must be uh, more than that. We need people who are actually uh, doing this. Yeah, that's true. Be I disruptive. Guess we need to use this chance to actually ask people in the audience to get involved with blockchain. And maybe we'll conclude with just like a few words uh, and phrases what would, uh, that would get people inspired to get involved on the uh, entrepreneurship side, I don't know, on development side. So what would be like, what would encourage people to get involved with blockchain? <laughs> I think people have already done the first step, which is to come out and start learning yeah. about it, what it is, and make up their own mind. Is it something worth their time or not? The second thing is I always say there's so much online material mm -hmm. on whether you go on uh, Reddit, whether you go on GitHub, it's just so much material. If anyone coming from an engineering background and spend a week on that, uh, you have enough material to start at least creating smart contracts at home. If you are a marketing person, if you are uh, into operations, there are so many companies. That's what the next stage looks like. Three developers together can start an idea, but to call it a company, they need help of the whole people's and operation group. So irrespective of what background you come from, uh, mm -hmm. there is a huge re there's a huge space and a, uh, and a requirement in this community. Just be smart about it. Just be make a good decision as before you do an investment in a token launch. Is like, is this the company I want to spend my next one year on? Yeah. And uh, opportunities are great. And the, I, I've, I've been noticing the pain. This startup system is way better than any other startup system. So enough incentives. Those would be your final words. <laughs> Uh, build real projects. I receive uh, a lot of proposals from startups, and I've seen a lot of prototypes, and no one's using it. So uh, just get on board, but also build real projects. Uh, I believe all the prototypes <laughs> you've built, but work together and get people on board and uh, make it real. Yep. Thank you so much for the intention. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.